Hey everyone, it's Pastor Nathan, and welcome to this week's session of Table Talks. This week, we're going to look at the ministry of the early church after Pentecost, starting in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. So even as you're turning to that passage around your table, uh, read along with me as I read the first section of that for us in verses 1 through 5. It says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple for the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. A man who was lame from birth was being carried there. He was placed each day at the temple gate called Beautiful so that he could beg from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked for money. When Peter, along with John, looked straight at him, they said, Look at us. So he turned to them, expecting to get something from them. Uh, I love this story. This is a story that I didn't pay very careful attention to for a long time. But when I really got into the what's going on here, it's a passage that deeply moves me. As we said from the outset of Acts, Acts is the story about how the early church, empowered by God's Spirit, continues the ministry of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And there are some dynamics in this passage that should really remind us of something we saw in the ministry of Jesus. I like to say it this way. Jesus went to situations that other people often went around. One of Jesus' most famous teachings recorded only in the Gospel of Luke, the same Luke who writes Acts, or, or through whom God inspires Acts to be written, is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Where a man is on the road and he falls amongst robbers who leave him half dead, right? And a priest and a Levi both come by this man, but rather than going to his need, these men go around it. And the irony, the surprise of the story that it's not the good Jew, it's not the priest, it's not the Levite who goes to help the man, it's the Samaritan. The Samaritan distinguishes himself as the good neighbor, the exemplar, by going to something that others would have gone around. There's another example in the ministry of Jesus where Jesus meets the woman at the well in Samaria in John chapter 4. Samaria was the middle portion of the promised land with Galilee to the north and Judea to the south. And most Judeans or Galileans, rather than going through Samaria, would go, you guessed it, around Samaria. But not Jesus. Jesus goes to what others went around. And it resulted not only in the salvation of the woman, but the salvation of her village as she shared Jesus with them. Here you see John and Peter going to a situation that others would go around. How do we know that others went around? This man who was lame from birth was at the temple begging for money every single day. If you've ever been... Uh, uh, sought out for money, if someone has ever begged of you, it can sometimes be an awkward encounter. Uh, and I love what you have in this passage. This man knew where to go to ask others for help, but Peter and John also knew where to go to have an opportunity for healing. Is it possible that they have seen this guy before? After all, they're in the temple every day, and so is he. And much to this guy's surprise, he's going to get more not less than he hopes for from Peter and John. I love that because this is moving into the ministry of the early church. We've seen how the early church took part in something miraculous at Pentecost when God poured out His Spirit on all flesh, people from every nation under heaven, right? We also heard in Acts 2, 42 through 47 that God was performing signs and wonders through the apostles. But this is our first detailed account of a miracle in the ministry of the early church. And again, it's Peter who had gotten so many things wrong through whom Jesus works to make this situation right. I also want to highlight um, uh, that not only do they go to this situation, I think the text is emphasizing that. Uh, not only do they go to what others look around, uh, or would go around, they look at something from which others might look away. This man, when he saw Peter and John uh, uh, about to enter the temple, he asked for money. And it says, they looked straight 
at him. They did not turn away from the need. And even though he was already looking for them to ask for money, they said, look at us. They're after direct engagement. What I want to highlight, though, about the early church is that whether through miracles or through what we regard as normal means, miracles and ministry were always a means to share the message about Jesus. Miracles were not miracles for miracles sake. Miracles were a means to ultimately share the message about Christ. Wonderful hands-on ministry and benevolent things that the early church did then and does today should never be an end to themselves. They should always be a vehicle uh, for sharing the message about Christ. There are so many ways that churches can engage needs, physical, emotional, or otherwise. But any need we meet is not a permanent solution outside of the salvation of those who call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And that's what the second half of today's passage is really going to open up after we spend some time talking around our tables together. So take several minutes working through the discussion guide. Again, never feel bound to the discussion guide. It's there as a help to facilitate discussion. But if discussion takes you all uh, other places, that's fine too. Uh, but spend several minutes talking around your table, and then we'll come back together for the second half of this week's passage. All right, welcome back everyone. In the second half of this week's passage, we have verses 6 through 10. So let's read those together as we get into this portion of God's Word. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Then, taking him by the right hand, he raised him up, and at once his feet and ankles became strong. Uh, literally in Greek, immediately. At once his feet and ankles became strong. So he jumped up and started to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and very importantly, praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized that he was the one who used to sit and beg at the beautiful gate of the temple. So they were filled with awe and astonishment at what had happened to him. Several things. Like I said, this is the first public miracle that's recorded in detail from the early church. This is the ministry of the church continuing the ministry of Jesus. If you read the ministry of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, surprise, surprise, what is the first public miracle recorded in the Gospel of Mark? Jesus taking a man who was lame and helping him to walk. And in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus uses a physical miracle, healing of someone's ability to walk, to show that he has the authority to do something spiritual, forgive sins. He uses something that would not last forever, helping this man to walk, because eventually that man became old. Eventually that man died. But Jesus used what wouldn't last forever to provide a window on what would. Don't miss it in this passage. They start their ministry the same way that Jesus did. They come across a lame man and through the power, not of Peter, not through the power of John, through the power of the name of Jesus, this man is enabled to walk. But notice that this man who is, and also, by the way, there's another link to the Gospel of Mark. Mark uses this word over and over and over again, immediately, immediately, immediately. And don't miss it. Right after they healed this guy at once, immediately, his feet and ankles became strong. Luke is saying their ministry is connected with Jesus's. But again, it isn't uh, relegated to the physical miracle the guy walks, yes. In fact, he leaps, yes. But most importantly, this man praises God. In fact, Luke emphasizes that again in verse 9. All the people saw him walking, dot, 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 and praising God. And they recognized that he was the one who used to sit and beg at the beautiful gate of the temple. So what's the result? The result is not only through the physical miracle, but through what it represents spiritually, the people are filled with awe and astonishment. It's like when Jesus heals the lame man in Mark 2. Who can forgive sins but God alone? God himself is doing something through his human agents 
in the early church, empowered by His Holy Spirit. To me, this passage raises some very important questions for us today. How do we continue the ministry of Jesus and the early church in our setting? There's a famous story told from the late Middle Ages where Thomas Aquinas was speaking to the Pope of his day. And the Pope was reflecting on the church's different state from the early days. No longer was the church persecuted. No longer was the church bereft of resources. Thomas Aquinas uh, had the Pope say to him, You know, Aquinas, no longer can the church say, Silver and gold have I none. But Aquinas responded to the Pope, opining, But nor can she say, Take up your mat and walk. So often we can let good things, even good things that we have from God, take the place of the power He wants us to exercise through the Holy Spirit. One thing you need to always be praying about in your walk with Christ and that we always need to be praying about in our ministry as a church is God help us do the kind of ministry, help us be the people who seek the kind of ministry that can only be attributed to the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. God, help this be a place, help me be a person of such radical generosity, uh, of such radical forgiveness, of such radical love and obedience to God's Word that only the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, can get credit. Help people look at me the way that they looked at this guy who was healed. Hey, he used to be this way. And now, solely by the power of God, something else is happening in his or her life. Uh, may we never get a false sense of confidence in material means, because just like physical healings, they are nothing more than a means to the message of the life-giving good news in Jesus Christ our Lord and what he wants to do for every person forever. Everything else that we do is a temporary. The one thing that we have that can make an eternal difference in anyone's life is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So whatever we do, may everything we do be about that. Spend some time uh, discussing around your tables, and when you're done, close in a word of prayer, and we'll see you next week on Table Talks. God bless.